And now we're going to continue our studies in the gradient tool. So let's go ahead and start here back into the splash screen or the start screen. And let's go ahead and click on create new. And let's go ahead and choose another canvas, about a thousand by a thousand pixels. Resolution is 72. Give it a white background. Press create. There it is. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is turn this canvas into red. Now there's a couple of ways you can do that, uh, but let's go ahead and do the first way. Let's click on the layers palette. And what I want to do is add another layer on top of the background, which is white. So what I I can, yes, uh, for the most part, paint this canvas blue if I wanted to. I can just take the paint bucket tool and spill it in there. But I like to do it the more professional way. So let's go into Layer, New, and then Layer again. So once again, I'm going to move up to Layer, New, and then Layer again. And now I'm going to go ahead and get this dialog box. I'm going to call it red because that's the color that I'd like to use. There it is right there. Okay, So we got background white and now we're gonna paint this layer red. And the way to do that is pretty obvious. First of all I'm going to go to the gradient tool and if you're already at the paint bucket tool that's good because that's where we need to be. So click on the paint bucket tool and there's a foreground tool. So click on that. Let's choose a nice red. Uh, I guess up here is good. And let's go ahead and paint it in there. Notice everything turns red. All right, we got our red. Now what we're going to do is create a gradient of blue to go over the red. Okay, let's try that. So to do that, I'm going to create yet, yet another layer. Okay, so I'm going to go up here, File, uh, I'm sorry, Layer, New, Layer. Okay, this time I'm going to call it Blue and there we go and so what I want to do now is go ahead and click on the foreground tool click on blue and there we go okay so now I'm gonna return back to the gradient tool there we have it and automatically you'll notice on the very top now this is not something that you may see you may see something completely different it all depends on exactly which stage you left the gradient tool on. And so what I'm going to do is uh, point out the fact that this is, if you click on the gradient bar right here, so if you click on, click on the basics tab, you'll notice that by default, usually it goes to the first tab, which is the foreground to background icon. And when you first click on the gradient tool it does by default select a blend from the foreground to the background but the second icon here it goes from the foreground to transparent just as it's saying right there foreground to transparent and at that point I can now control since I'm here at the gradient editor I can control how much blue and how much transparent so I can click right here in the stop. Here is the color stop. And you'll notice that's where this blue diamond really is handy. And I can move it up a little bit, okay? And or I can move it back a little bit. And as you can see right now, oops, I can click on more. Oops, I made the mistake there. Let me go ahead and press cancel and bring it down. Okay, so if I click here and then I click on the diamond, okay, you'll see that it can kind of control the uh, the amount of blue there is but I'm gonna go ahead and press OK and now if I drag the icon or the uh, gradient cursor all the way down okay there it is right there it starts up with blue ends up with a little purple and then goes into red so you see that the purple and the I'm sorry you can see that the blue and the red kinda of mix up making that purple that we all know Alrighty, very good. Now, to undo any kind of gradient right here, I'm going to have to refer to the History palette. So I'll click on History, and then I'll go back up one before that I created that gradient. So what if I want a specific blue, not just this kind of blue? Well, obviously I can go ahead and change the blue on the foreground color. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and do that, and I'm going to go ahead, this time I'll turn it into a green. There we go. So now I just kind of drag down. There it is. It turns from green to another color back into red. And now I'm going to attempt to do something that is kind of crazy because I've never done this before. So let's you and I try it together. First and foremost, you notice that the last icon, even though it's blue, it's really green. Okay, You, may, you can go ahead and type it in green, but we're going to get rid of this. Um, let's go ahead and right click and delete that layer. Okay, so what I want is a solid red. Now, last time we created red, white, and blue. Okay, so we've already got the red. Now we need the white and the blue. So the red part has to be transparent. So in other words, we're going to go from red to white to blue. Let's see how we can do that. And for that, we got to go to the gradient. Let's try it. And hopefully we'll be able to do it. Let's do it together. Okay, so now I'm going to, whoops, I get a miss. Easy to make mistakes in Photoshop, but as long as you got the Control Z or the History Palette, okay, you notice that I made a little bit of accidental gradient thing over there. I can just go back up one level and back to normal. That's the beauty of the History Palette. All right, let's try our little fun spot here, shall we? Let's go ahead and click on the uh, gradient bar over here and get to the gradient editor. We're going to create a brand new icon preset. All right. First of all, like I said, we want to go from red to white to blue. So obviously we need to create three colors. Now we'll start from the left on the right hand side this time. Let's start on the right hand side. So red, white, and blue. So we're going to click on the color stop over here. Okay, and what that does, it prompts the color picker. And let's go ahead and choose our blue. Okay, so now we got our blue. We're going to choose our white over here. We're going to create a new color stop. And this time, click on the color picker. And this time, choose white, as white as can be. Alrighty, now it doesn't look nearly as done, and it's not. This side over here, we're going to click on red. So we're going to click right here, get it away from green. We still want to create a red. Now we can actually stop right here. We got red, we got white, and we got blue. Wrong. We're not done. Let me introduce you to the top opacity stop over here. Actually, you know what? Let's change this lower stop to a white. Let's do that. Okay, so there we go. So now we got white, white, blue. Okay, let's see what happens. Now, what we can do is we have to click on the top stops right here. These stops on the top part of this bar is also known as the gradient or the opacity stop. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, wish it would show itself opacity stop. There it is right there. If I click there, now I need another one right here. See, just like so. And here, I need. I have my my third opacity stop. Now this one, I'm going to change the opacity. It's currently at zero. I'm going to go all the way to 100. Notice how the blue shows up. For this one right here, it's also at 100. Notice the red shows up. Now for th I'm sorry, the white shows up. And over here, for this one, I'm going to go ahead and bring it all the way down to transparent. There it is. Zero at transparent. Now why would I want to do that? Why can't I just uh, choose red if I want to? Well, because I'm showing you something. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and uh, call this custom. Okay, how about red, white, blue, gradient. Let's call that. And go ahead and click on new. There it is right there. So as you can see pretty much in this icon, it starts up transparent, it ends up with white, and it goes into blue. So let's see if we can do that. Well, there it is right there. Let's see how it looks. Going across, there it is. It starts up with red, white, and blue. Undo it. Let's go ahead a little bit deeper. Okay, I guess I have the radiant uh, gradient or radial gradient selected up here. Let me go ahead and choose the linear gradient and see how that looks. 
Okay, there it is right now. Starts up with red, a little shinier white, and the blue. I kind of like this way better. Okay, have the background a certain color, and then moving on into the white, and then going on to another solid color, in this case, blue. Okay, so now what I like to do is apply these techniques to an actual image. So I have a couple of images, and now if you go to your Action in three, two, one. Take two, gradient with images. Okay, so now let's try to apply these techniques using images. And what I'm going to ask you to do is refer to the exercise files, this time ep11 underscore three, and you'll see that I have these following images. One of my favorite charities is the ASPCA. Okay, that basically prevents animal abuse and of course I love New York something I've been hearing in s since I was a kid and here's New York okay beautiful Manhattan skyline and we will definitely uh, credit some of uh, the photos that we have so let's talk about this one shot here as you can see a really nice image of a girl and her dog or a woman and her dog and uh, I guess that's uh, this one here is the same image only this is kind of the effect that we're gonna get if we use a proper gradient tool so that's what we're gonna get and there's a couple of things that we're gonna try as well so what I'd like for you to do is see if you can go ahead and select both the ASPCA and the woman and as if I want to if I can remind you if you're using a Mac you press and hold the command key on your keyboard and select both of these of these files uh, I believe it's a control key on the windows okay so let's go ahead and do that and then you want to right click open with Photoshop okay so 